Everybody, welcome back to Barry Good Entertainment. This is episode sixty-nine. Ooh! And I am, <laughs> I am here with my excellent, beautiful, gorgeous friend with the best lipstick in the whole universe, Lola. I am so How happy. How are you today, Lola? I'm exhausted. It's been a day. I already broke into my beer that apparently is brewed <laughs> by. Lagunitas, which is tripping me up. I mean, I, I think it's actually kind of fabulous. I'm like, dang, but this is expensive for a Lagunitas beer. It shouldn't have been eleven ninety nine. But anywho's eleven ninety nine. Yeah, for a, is it a, for a pint? What? No, for the six pack. What's? Oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, sorry. Actually, that actually for Newcastle, which I don't even think we can get anymore. Oh, look at that. And they've changed really? the, uh, yeah, it's got a nice old yellow, yellow label. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, when I was looking at it, it said it's from Petaluma, Petaluma, California. And I was like, oh, it's not imported anymore. And when I Googled it, it says brewed by Lagunitas. And I'm like, holy crap. Wow. And I didn't quite realize that Heineken bought them. I didn't, I didn't remember that. Well, it may not be that Heineken, unless you found that Heineken did buy Newcastle. Did Heineken actually buy the Newcastle label? Well, this they... article, I put it, uh-huh. Oh, I'm sorry. This I'm article, sorry, I interrupted I, you. I just, I, that's okay. I just put this article in our um, Google Doc. It says, Heineken USA is proud to announce the March 2019 relaunch of Newcastle Brown Ale brewed by Lagunitas Brewing Company. So Heineken is responsible for this. So strange. Mm. So apparently. Well, yeah, I yeah. guess Heineken must, Heineken must own the label then. I because Newcastle so. was here. Newcastle was fairly big. The last time that we saw them here in Oregon, they were still doing the, like the little mini kegs. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And then it just like it vanished off the face of the earth. We didn't see it again for a very long time. Yeah. So then they must have contracted with Lagunitas to brew it. And yeah. it's back. Yeah, it says Newcastle Brown Ale will be produced at Lagunitas Breweries in Petaluma, California, and Chicago, and will be available in 12 ounce, six. 12 and 24 pack bottles at a 7.75 gallon slim steel keg. The brand will continue to be marketed by Heineken and distributed through its network. That's just crazy. Oh. Yeah, it's getting weird? so complicated now. So what do you think of it? How is this how when was the last time you had this beer? Well, I remember there used to be a little English pub downtown here. And I remember I would order Hein um Heineken, Newcastle, because that's one of the ones that I was familiar with and knew. And yeah. I used to get um what well, the tan black and tan or brown and tan? Yeah, what black and tan. Black and tan. Black I used and tan. To, yeah, I used to order those all the time. So I would say it's been 
six years, maybe a little oh, more wow. since I've had one. Yeah. And I noticed I hadn't seen them. Um, I just didn't really realize they'd stop, you know, distributing here until now. So what do you think of it now? Well, it tastes like I remember it. So, I mean, it's a brown ale. I mean, brown ale is a brown ale is a brown ale. It's Well, if it's made okay. <laughs> yeah, it's made okay. I mean, oh, brown ale is a brown ale. It looks, yeah, it looks the, same. the same. Smells yeah. the same. Mm. Tastes, tastes like what I remember Newcastle tasting like. Which is good. So Lagunitas, Lagunitas, head, you know, oh, mm -hmm. high five Lagunitas, because it looks, like, uh, looks like you're brewing it right. Mm -hmm. Well, I've always liked Lagunitas, so yeah, they do good. And and I think I, I think they're still em, employee owned, aren't they? I know they did some kind of deal. I can't remember exactly what. Lagunitas it was did. A, yeah, it was, it, it was a, a weird percentage to a larger thing for distribution and you know because the distribution network here in america is so messed up that yeah. you know even employee owned places are having to adjust their ownership mm -hmm. in order to join with independent distributors so that they don't have to deal with ab and bev's distribution service which we all hope will die a horrible flaming death and would be nice <laughs> would be nice and I just realized I, I already answered my own questions. Duh, they sold some of themselves to Heineken. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> duh, Lola, duh. I just said that, yeah. Well, you know, it is that time of year. Yeah. It is the pumpkin. <gasps> oh, look at that. Elysian Dark Knife. I haven't seen that one. Nice. Uh, and yes, um, I, I do, uh, I know there's a, there's a, a thing around here somewhere to like open the bottle. Otherwise I may have to use my tea. Oh no. I bought the beer and I can't get into it. No, nope, here it is. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. Good. Yeah, every year I buy at least one pumpkin one, but we, we actually had, only two that I saw, two two different companies that I saw that had pumpkin in the safe way that I was at, and that was Elysian and mm -hmm. our local two town cidery. Mm -hmm. Those were the only ones with pumpkin that I saw. Aww. So I didn't have a whole lot of choice because I didn't go to market of choice. I was too busy mm. filling out paperwork. Yeah, I know. Uh, let's see. Look at that. Ooh. Wow, it's dark. This is only a 4.3%. What? It looks like it should be yeah. 10%. My this goodness. is oh, a Schwartz bubbling. beer. Look at it bubbling. It's a Schwartz beer. So uh, I'm not expecting a whole lot of heft. Okay. I am expecting a decent amount of flavor. And, you know, always remember, so. uh, feed your producers. Yeah, your definitely. Producers. But not after midnight. They turn into gremlins. And don't get them wet while they're near the computer. Exactly, because then they go they electrocute, <laughs> and that's not good. Mm. It's good. This has mm. a lot of bitter to it. Okay, hops bitter. It's like the no, like a dark ch Ooh. chocolate coffee bitter. Okay. Okay, Elysian. Um. Great Schwartz beer, especially with the roast. Mm -hmm. Um, there's nothing pumpkin about this beer. Yeah, I know. I was gonna say I didn't hear you say anything about pumpkin. There's uh well the the description specifically says uh pale Munich roasted barley and dark malts. I get that. German northern brewer and saws hops, I get that. Pumpkin mm -hmm. entrails, cinnamon and ginger. I get no pumpkin, I get no cinnamon, and I get absolutely no ginger. Seems like it must have gotten buried. Well, yeah, it got buried. I can't in the even other smell stuff. it. I mean, oh, well, uh, it's a nice Schwartz beer. I'm glad I got it, but I hope um, you didn't pay too much for it. No, no, no. Okay. This wasn't. I think this was. Uh, 
five ninety nine. Oh, that's for the for the bottle at Safeway. That's good. I think. That's good. That's that's very fair. Um, so nice Schwartz beer, but uh, Elysian, you screwed it up again. I know. <laughs> Maybe they need you know, to start adding that at the end or something. The last somehow... time, yeah, the last the last time I had an Elysian beer was the split shot, uh -huh. which, which is supposed to you know it's supposed to be the chocolate and espresso, uh -huh. and even that had changed. So Elysian, as you remember, was one of the first sellouts. Yeah. Ever I since then, I, ha I have been consistently disappointed with their beers. Consistently. That's too bad. <laughs> That's really too bad. I mean, it's, this isn't a total disappointment, but it is a disappointment in which I, I was expecting the like the flavor of the season, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's you look forward to that. I mean, now if the now if the pumpkin isn't the texture, the texture is really nice and thick. It's okay. It's a little that's thicker, good. It's a little thicker than a lager, so. Yeah. Oh, it is pretty satisfying. It's not bad. I'll, I will continue to drink it. <laughs> well, yeah, you're not gonna throw it away. No, absolutely not. It is, it is definitely not a, not a sink pour. But uh, nope. if you're looking for that like seasonal flavor, mm -hmm. skip it. Move on to something else. Move on to something that's not a lesion. Yeah, I, I would say it's. I mean, if you're really looking for pumpkin, move on. Go to Southern Tier. Okay. Go to Southern Tier. Go to Pumpkin. Go mm -hmm. to yeah, yeah. Go to the cideries. The cideries now. Ooh, two those town, are good now, too. I absolutely know. I know for an absolute fact. Two Town Cider Pumpkin Cider. Absolutely, you get every single ounce of pumpkin you pay for. <laughs> That's awesome. See, I love that. They definitely they they take a whole lot of care with their drinks. Good. My favorite is still, I haven't had that many, but my favorite is still, I think it's Southern Tier, the Warlock. It's a pumpkin. Mm. I think it's oh, them. Oh, yes. Warlock. Mm -hmm. Warlock is good. I always like that one. I always like that one. Uh, surprisingly enough, I never liked pumpkin because I, I, li I like. You don't like pumpkin? Mm -mm, no. Nope. Oh. Now, from oh. what I've heard, it changes year to year, but the time I had it, I didn't care for it because. I'm one of the ones who likes all the the um the herbs and stuff, the spices in it, you know. I like it to taste yeah. like a, a um like a pie. And when I had pumpkin, it just tasted flat. It tasted like just pumpkin. Like I just put a pumpkin in my mouth and I was like, Ugh. <laughs> So that was my I opinion. love the taste of no, I really think pumpkin does have a taste. So many other people don't think pumpkin has a taste. I think pumpkin has a taste, and I love the taste of pumpkin in beer. Okay. I just didn't care for pumpkin the one time I had it, but that was just one time, and it changes every year. But mm. I, pro I, well, I know I the like producer, Warlock. The producer likes it. Good. The producer likes it. That's good. Okay. That is good. The, the Elysian, he likes the Elysian? Yeah, he likes the, yeah, cool. he, he likes the Schwartz beer. He likes okay. it. Okay. But does he taste any pumpkin or smell any pumpkin? Uh, good question. I think he's going to tell us. Mm -hmm. While he's tell while he's uh doing that, um I hear Guinness has launched a new beer. I know. Isn't that interesting? This sounds very American to me. Uh -huh. It sounds like they're trying to create something that is purely American. And no, the producer cannot taste pumpkin, but it's a good Schwartz beer. Okay. Back to Guinness. It's, they created a milk stout. This Is this like yeah. super different for them, do you think? Well, I don't associate them with special flavors to me guinness has always been guinness just like newcastle has always been newcastle so this will be different um, yeah i don't know the abb um, is 5.3 which mm -hmm. is far above what they usually produce yeah they usually rarely go above five yeah so i'm i'm pretty interested to see you know, if and the and the the, the artwork, Ooh. the artwork is 
so American. Yeah. Yep. It's very. It looks craft. Yeah. It looks craft brewery mm -hmm. American, doesn't it? It does. It looks like something Ninkazi would do. Yes. Yeah, it does. Very spacey. And it says it's supposed to commemorate 50 years after the first man landed on the moon. Oh, really? Oh, that's, that's what the article so says. Cool. Yeah, oh, it that's makes so sense. cool. And well, it's brewed in Baltimore. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, here we go. It with be, it, with oh. it, they aim to create what American Guinness will mean. So, yes, they are attempting to grab American taste buds. But this says it's only going to be throughout the Mid Atlantic in Massachusetts. That's not even me. I'm okay, only, but I'm that's, get it. yeah, but that's still that's, but that's still just a little bit. I mean, if it goes well, mm -hmm. they're definitely big enough to spread it through the rest of the United States. Okay. Oh, and apparently it's been available in Baltimore in the tap room. Um, so before this, it was only oh, on site oh. and they called it Guinness milk stat on, on tap. Well, if anybody's out there that has actually had this stuff, let us know yeah. what it's like. We'd love to know. We would absolutely love yeah. to know. I wonder if fire will get it. I don't know. He's not drinking much beer anymore. I don't I know. I don't know if he's, if he's, uh, if he's drinking anymore. And this article says it's cho there's chocolate in it, which kind of segues into another new beer that has Hershey's in it. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, let me find the article. Let me open up the article. Hold on. I'll, I'll read the article. It's from BuzzFeed. Um, let's see. Okay. Oh, come on, I'm trying to scroll down. Scroll down. It's just kind of stuck. Oh, it's from Yingling, U.S.'s oldest brewery. Oh, Yingling. Yingling. Yingling, yep. Hershey's Chocolate Porter. Um, it's their first wow. ever uh, uh, Hershey's first ever beer with the Pennsylvania Yingling. Um Let's see. This person had it. Let's see what he says. Yes, I know what a porter is. You don't have to beer explain to me. Okay. Um, okay. My there's God. your face, the, Peggy. The photo. The photo of this is of the beer with the literal perfect head spilling over the top of the glass. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. <laughs> it looks really good. It looks very yeah. much like a porter is supposed to. Yeah, let me kind of have to. It's hard to scroll down because it just kind of jumps around a lot. He says it took him back to his childhood days of drinking chocolate milk. I don't know <laughs> about that. I mean, I don't expect a, a chocolate porter to taste like, you know, milk, chocolate milk. But, okay, well, what about okay. you who? What about the. Uh, I love you who. There's a yeah, Yoohoo the beer? Yoohoo, the Yoohoo beer. Was it? There's uh, a it's, not beer? Called, it's not called Yoohoo. It's called something else. Oh. Huh. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Um, Terrapins. Yeah, there we go. Terrapins yeah. Moohoo. Moohoo. That's really good. I, I haven't had it in a while, but I used to get it every year. That is really good. Their Moohoo is really good, and it's very chocolatey. I wouldn't say it tastes like a Yoohoo because it's not the same texture. But it's definitely a very good chocolate beer. Moohoo is very, very good. Well, this could uh -huh. be this could be very this could be like a similar. Yeah. Okay, I hope I hope I get to taste this. Yeah. I wanna be great. Let's, I'm gonna Google I'm gonna try to find the Yingling site and see if it distributes if it's gonna distribute it. Yingling Hershey, where to buy? Let's see, where to buy? Come on, come on, Google. Um, where to find it? NY Post. This is from the New York Post. It's an article. Oh gosh, that looks so good. This is from um, like two, three days ago. Let's see what it says. It says it's due out mid October. 
Um, it's limited edition. They spent nearly a year developing it. It will be available on draft only in bars and restaurants across the U eastern U.S. Northeastern U.S., you jack tards. <laughs> Pennsylvania, Ohio, Massachusetts, West Virginia, New York, Virginia, Maryland, Connecticut, New Jersey, oh, Rhode well, Island, Washington, D.C. I know. I don't see Florida That's anywhere weird. here. I know. I don't see Florida anywhere. Northeast, all... you lucky SOBs, you're getting all the good stuff. That pisses me off. And uh, Indiana and Kentucky. That pisses me off. Uh, uh, Kentucky doesn't need good beer. Yeah, they, they got freaking whiskey. They're okay. This just sucks. I'm very upset now. I'm going to have to go find some moohoo, make myself feel better. <laughs> Dang. I got all excited. Before I post an article, I'm going to look and see where it's going to be distributed before I even post it because I'm just tired of being disappointed. <laughs> Dang. Well, uh, there. Uh, there is a, there's a question here that um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> about a about a brand new whiskey, whether it's a, a good idea or a bad idea, from uh, Jason from Scannerdrome mm -hmm. brought, the, brought this up, brought this mm -hmm. to my attention. Glenn Levy is creating whiskey capsules. Now, what is that? Do you remember? Do you remember Gushers, the candy Gushers? I don't remember what they were. Well, they're they're liquid filled capsules, and that's essentially these are like the capsules are made from seaweed, so they're like little. Okay, I hate to to do this, but no. Oh. So the comments the comments on the Twitter post said they looked like Tide Pods. They and do. I have to admit they kind Tide, of, they Tide Pod Challenge. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> they kind of look like Tide Pods. They're they're just fat little capsules yeah. filled with. Uh, whiskey or whiskey cocktail. Uh huh. And you basically pop them in your mouth and take a bite, and it, you know, it opens up, and that's how you get the whiskey instead of having to pour it into a glass. Yeah. Oh God. This there's there's a Twitter uh, thing on here. Oh, they're hor that's like most of the comments are really awful. Really okay. awful. This this is from now. I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm not. I'm actually not sure. I have both good thoughts about mm -hmm. this and i have bad thoughts about this mm -hmm. i have mostly bad thoughts about it really you don't mm -hmm. like the idea well first of all okay i'm not trying to be a sour puss but do we really want to promote the the idea of just popping whiskey in your mouth like it's candy i mean you should enjoy your drinks take your time with it if people are just popping it like candy I don't know. I just don't like that. I don't think it's a good idea. Hmm. And I know that sounds kind of, I don't know, puritanical of me, but it's just, it's just a thought. Well, my objections are pretty much based on, you know, like the classical way that you enjoy whiskey <clears throat> is to uh, expose it to a small amount of air and you, mm -hmm. you, also have the option of mixing in a small amount of water now okay. i do find mixing in that small amount of water mm -hmm. really does help you okay. can't do that with these mm -hmm. all you're getting is the whiskey mm -hmm. you're not you're not getting the pre like the 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 pre aroma of it no nope. like i love to i stick yeah. my nose in the glass and yeah. i smell uh, yeah but you don't get that with this. This is the, like a quickie. This is like the quickie version of drinking. On you have the a nooner. Other hand, but see, on the other hand, I kind of like that idea. It's so down and dirty. It's <laughs> we're so impatient. every once in a while. I don't. I don't want to have to. You know, there are times when I don't want to have to open a whole bottle because I'm not going to drink a whole yeah, bottle in maybe. And if there's if there's no like very small fifth mm -hmm. available of mm -hmm. Glen Levy, which there is not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Capsule might be the the next best 
you know, the next best thing for me. Or Maybe. this could be great for those who just want to try it out. Maybe. I mean, there's nothing that know. says you can't just snip it and pour it in a glass. Yeah, that's true. If you just, just... want a taste, just a mouthful. And yeah. the packaging, that specific type of packaging is mm -hmm. very, very biodegradable. It's seaweed. Yeah, that's true. So you're not yeah. wasting the glass from an entire bottle on yeah. just a sip. That's true. And let, me, and let me tell you, Glen Levy is not the most inexpensive whiskey around. Oh, really? <laughs> it, how... it, you can really take some a chunk of pocket change trying to buy hmm. some of that stuff. So, and someone in Twitter said how much they paid for it. Um, I can't find where I saw it, but I don't remember. I can't find it. But yeah, so I guess it depends on how much it costs. I, mean, I don't know. These would make admirable sampler packs. That's a good really point. Really admirable sampler packs. I think it would be good, like, like you said, like a sampler if someone has a booth and they're selling it and you could mm -hmm. pop one say here taste it just pop it and how big it's hard to tell from the video how big each one is can you tell uh okay i looked at it and it mm -hmm. did look a little big like mm -hmm. i i'm uncomfortable like taking them that kind of mouthful of whiskey yeah that's but a I lot don't know, i don't know how big the person's mouth was <laughs> i mean the person who actually puts the, they do a good job trying to show the, it, it looks, you know, like a, like that, mm -hmm. which I'm sure they could probably, they, they probably advertise how much is in the capsule, I but it looked a little yeah. big. I wonder if you could like take it and bite the end off and go and just slurp it up like that. Oh, or yeah. would it disintegrate? Yeah. Do you think the seaweed thing would disintegrate if you tried to do that? No, okay. no. Um, I've actually, I've actually, those seaweed packages oh. are actually fairly tough. Okay. You, you either need to kind of chew them up or, you know, let them sit in your mouth for quite a mm -hmm. while, you know, or just, mm -hmm. you know, or you can just swallow them. They're, you know, they go down pretty easy. But yeah. they don't, they definitely don't melt, you know, very easily. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just laughing yeah, at you, it. Hmm. You could handle them, you know. Uh, I'm just laughing at that. This, this, this woman, um, she doesn't have like a ton of followers, but she got liked and retweeted the heck out of her. I'm going to have to follow her. Her name is at the Sarah York and she's a um, she lives in New York City she's a staff writer for at we are the box co-host of at Diking out podcast um, she doesn't have that many followers you know compared to a lot of people but she had 558 retweets and 8200 likes on this tweet where she said guys I don't know how to tell you this teens are gonna put these in their butts yeah, I, I stop. <laughs> it's true. They will. Because people already put alcohol in their butts. It's a thing. It's really a thing. Oh, so. I, I, I don't even want to think about it. It's, oh, that's really gross. People <laughs> do it. They do. They put alcohol in their butts. Um, people who don't want to gain weight, they do that because they, it bypasses their stomach. So, yeah. I don't know. So yeah. Oh, oh God. So, so, I mean, I wonder uh, what would our fans think of this? Uh, now I can't get the, I can't get it out of my head, Lola. I can't get it out of my head. I mean, Tide Me Pods neither. was bad enough, but whiskey suppositories. <laughs> whiskey suppositories is so bad. And and I'm following her. Let's see. I'm going to add her to a list. I don't have a list that calls, um, you know, Tide Butt Pod. I don't have a list like that yet. Oh. Um, I don't really want to make a list like that just for one. Yeah. Um, 
So what list can I put her? I'll put her on the alcohol list. I have a list called alcohol. I'll put her there. Alcohol. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting enough, laughing. but you know, interesting enough to follow her. So. Mm -hmm. uh, it's ultimately, I would definitely try it. I would definitely try Sir. it. Sir. Yep. Why is she saying the F Amber Geiger? Oh, that's the late. Oh, I know who that is. That's the lady who just got um, sentenced to 10 years for murder. Okay. I didn't know yes. who that was. I was like, who is she saying to F? But, oh, okay. I get it. Yeah. she. I'm, I'm with her on that. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just, uh. I'm all over the place right now. Okay. Well, following that, uh, disturbing Lively. decision good Lively. good bad idea lively yeah we, ha we have to uh we have to give a high five to nicole casares okay who um is who got a diversity scholarship hmm. to to the grace hopper conference on a um this is uh it's quite an opportunity um hmm. Nicole is the co-founder of the Long Beach Women in Tech. And That's, she's, been making, is, she's been making a good name for herself. Okay. Is that the same thing that um, the Jill Bryant is a part of? Didn't Jill well, Bryant I, mention that? Yeah, Jill Bryant is a part of Linux Chicks. Yeah. And Nicole, Nicole is part of, of Linux Chicks as well. Yeah, I, rem I remember the name Long Beach. Um, I remember Jill Bryant mentioning that. Cool. Okay. So uh, Nicole says she's excited and honored to be at the Grace Hopper Conference on a diversity scholarship. I will use this opportunity to absorb as much knowledge as I can and share that knowledge with my students, which I find admirable. Yeah. We need as many, we need as many women in tech as we can get and to encourage more women to jump into tech. Yeah. For I'm sake, following her get too. Smart. I'm following her too. Yeah. <clears throat> so great job, Nicole. Please mm. continue. Continue on. Mm. I'm trying to find a list of there's my technology list. I put everyone in a list. I have like a hundred different lists. And I put everyone in one been... list so that I can find people more easily. Excellent. Okay. That's an excellent idea. Yeah. Okay. All right. What's next on our list? Uh, Portland Cider Maker. Okay. It's fashion. Good for you, Cider Porter Maker. Port Portland Cider Maker. Portland. Whatever. Portland Cider Maker. Cider Portland Maker. You make Portlands. Lots of little Portlands. Tide Pods. Wherever there's a fascist beating up a person, Abram Goldman Armstrong will be there. Mm, okay. He runs a cidery and pub, Cider Riot. Uh, it, that has become a, a place for anti-fascists uh, who physically confront, confront right-wing protesters. Okay. It, so I, a lot of people here heard of the story in May of the, the far right brawlers attacking yes. anti fog um, people outside the uh, outside the, the pub. Yeah. And Goldman Armstrong went right ahead and sued Joey Gibson, the, the Patriot prayer leader, uh, mm. later that month because he interfered with Goldman's business. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, and well, we get into politics a lot around here. Um, mm. If you're going to attack people like that, then you should expect businesses to come out and protect themselves mm -hmm. within the letter of the law. Mm -hmm. huh. He studied abroad in Ireland. Mm-hmm. He's also the, uh, Goldman is also the, the person who received a ban for uh, waving the, the, the anti-fascist flag during a Timbers match. Now, yeah. that had to be overturned because it was ruled that, uh, that they had to be allowed to wave the flag if they wanted to. Yeah. 
Sounds like those pro those people probably didn't know what the flag was for. Uh, well, here's the problem is that they said they didn't want any political displays uh -huh. in the arena. And yet they went ahead and did um, a, uh, they went ahead and did a whole political display themselves oh. at the, yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know, uh, so if you, the arena, are going to hold a political display, mm -hmm. then you should you should expect that your fans have the same right to display political flags. Yeah, you can't ban it for other people and keep it for yourselves. It just doesn't work that way. If you only, if you only want, uh, if you only want it to be for one thing, then just keep it for one thing. Yeah. Unfortunately, Goldman has put the the pub up for sale. So oh, uh, yeah. And he said he he's, he's cash strapped. strapped. Cash, yeah. yeah, because of an overly ambitious expansion effort. That's too but bad. But the political clashes haven't helped. Yeah, that sucks. That, that sucks. Uh, I have a feeling if he's strong enough, he'll be able to come back with a different business I if he wants so. to. I hope so. God, it's, he said that they've been saying things like, we're going to burn your place down. Uh, oh, they said uh, some Ninja nasty Stream, stuff. Nin, Ninja Streams, you, you said, talk about crack addicts. I'm not sure exactly who you're talking about. Uh, on our, on our, is that Jason? It, what is it could it? be. I'm not, I'm not going to assume that that's, that's Jason. He said, talk about crack addicts. What? Okay, but I'm not Jay. sure exactly. Prior uh, conversation. Oh, prior conversation. Crack addicts. Oh, yeah. hey Jason. Yes, Jason. <laughs> what? What crack addicts? I don't. I don't remember what we were talking the, about. The Glenn Levy. Is oh, the, the whiskey. Levy? The whiskey. The Tide Pods. Tide Pods. <laughs> Weird. The whiskey up the butt. Uh, uh, yeah. Butt plugs, whiskey butt plugs, beer and butts. I came in. Oh. On that. You know what? Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my you know, god! You know no. what? You know what? My, my um headstone should say, "I came in on beer butts." <laughs> that's gonna be my headstone. Yeah, that's crack. That's um. I'm just saying. Well, I mean, they put it in a gel-like encasing. They should expect that. They really should. I like beer butts, and I cannot lie. I, you know what? I, I don't. I don't think I All like right, beer I'll, butts. I gotta stop Cyber's now. here too. Hi, Cyber. People do that Hi, with Cyber. cold coffee too. Oh, what okay. Yeah, I've heard, oh, I've heard of the coffee thing. I've heard of the coffee thing. Oh, the caffeine uh -huh. is ingested far faster oh. that way than it is when you drink it. It yes, is. but the diarrhea comes out much faster too. Oh! You're putting, oh! you're putting an acidic substance in a very fragile part of your body. Caffeinema, caffeinema. Oh. That's right. Oh. It's very acidic. Oh. oh, he talked about the coffee that came out of butts first. Yeah, I, I've heard. I've heard yes. of that, that. That is true, Texas. That, that it, is it, a it, real it, thing, huh? The new yes, Tux is right. It's new age bullshit. Uh, about the coffee. The coffee of the butt of this the. Oh. I just don't want that. I'm old fashioned. I'll digest my stuff the normal way. I like I it don't... to go in one way and out the other, and just it's the flow. Oh, it's the natural flow. Just like I wouldn't want it to go out, go in the bottom way and come out the top way. I wouldn't want that either. New Goop product line. Sai so said <gasps> new Goop product line. Oh, well, Cyber, have the I would, Goop. Yeah, I would not put her past it. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> yep, that's what the name is for, Goop. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh that's so disgusting. So disgusting. Okay, well, we're talking about this poor cider guy. He's Yeah, he's, well, I, I hope that 
I hope that he opens a different place which is calmer for him. Uh oh. Either I'm having problems or my host is having problems. Oh. Oh, Lola Winkle. Yes, poor Lola. Oh, the color is gone. Actually, you know what? Lola looks just as good in black and white as she does in color. Although I can't see the lipstick anymore. That's not bad. Well, you know, I'm actually going to get, I'm I'm going to wait for her. And then is was, she back? I was I, I got oh, this. There you are. I got this connected. Yeah. yeah. It's weird because like it turned your it, it turned your picture Ooh, black cool. and white, which kind of looks cool. I mean, you look good in black and okay. white. Okay, well, it was all with cold coffee at my butt. It turned me, it oh. drained all the color from me. I went, Ooh. and then I went, Ooh. but that is a warning <laughs> label. That is a warning label. Uh, I was reading more <laughs> warning. Warning, do not put this up your butt. Otherwise, you, you will turn, turn black, black and white. white like an old movie and you'll be stuck in the 1940s. But, but I was reading more of the article from the cider guy and I said, he called you out, Linda. Yeah. He called he me did. out? Really? Um, he, well, he's saying that he came in at the end of the craft brew boom in Portland and he said, I don't know that people care anymore if everybody wants to just drink White Claw. Oh, yeah. Well, White Claw is, you know, it, it serves a purpose. Yeah, it really does. I'm, I can't, I can't say anything about it because the calories are yeah. so low. Yeah, it is. So you know, I can drink more than just one without, you know. Yeah. Without worrying too much about it. Yeah, it's easy, easy drinking. And, you know, it's, it's, I call it grocery store alcohol, so it's not too expensive. Maybe it's a, maybe it's actually a conspiracy by the government to get us to drink less alcohol. Maybe. <laughs> At least we're not going to put white claw up our butt. Because that would oh! hurt putting a claw up your butt. No, that would hurt. No, no. Ow! So, Ow! so for enemas. Oh god, that would be awful. And then you can't taste it. No, no, you can't taste it. I mean, what's the point? You can't smell it. I wouldn't want to smell it. No, I do. Uh, no. Well. Mm -hmm. And um, Jason. Um, huh? Sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was going to read the same thing. The Ninja Stream says, come recession, Kraft is going to be hurting with all their current price increases. And that's quite true. Yes, that is true. Especially uh, especially now that specific, there are specific cities. I can't remember which one has actually done it. Specific cities are actually putting new taxes on beer. No! So, uh, glasses of beer are actually costing are actually being taxed like each glass they sell is That's being horrible. taxed That's wrong. I can't remember where it was I only saw a brief article of it I hope it's not ago. here I don't think it's here yeah, it's not Florida I would swear it's like okay. it's somewhere in the northeast yeah they, they like to tax people up there but everything's everything about craft beer is getting more expensive. I just googled it. And it says Florida adds excise tax of forty eight cents to beer and two twenty five to wine. I don't know if that's what oh, you're talking. About. That's the first thing that, that came up. It. Let me but it's see. a whole. It's the whole of Florida. Let me see. I can't even tell what when this article is from. Um. On uh, beer, wine, and distilled spirits. Hmm. Maybe. Let me keep looking because this is actually talking about all the states. 
This is um, alcoholproblemsandsolutions.org. I don't know. I just Googled it. It was the first thing that came up. I have no idea what it is. And Jason says, Miller Lite for the win. No, Miller Lite. No. Recession proof. And he is right yeah, it's about recession that. proof until until hey Miller Lite even Miller Lite is uh is subject to uh subject to increases in hops in taxes on water on you know that's a good point. resource on on resource increases that's a good hops. Point. Um, I don't know if I can find what we were talking about. I don't see anything that specifically says buy beer pour. Hmm. But, um, okay. In our chat, um, Che said Coors Banquet. And he said Lagunitas Imperial Stout for the odd treat. Okay. And Jason said the orange monster will put tariffs on hops. Yes, I hate the orange monster. I hate him. I don't say no, that lightly. No, the, or the orange, the orange monster is putting taxes, or not putting taxes, but has now put an extra restriction on immigrants. It's awful. Legal immigrants coming That's in horrible. have to have have to be able to afford uh, private, specific private health insurance. Obamacare doesn't count. Or mm -hmm. else they can't enter the country. It's ridiculous. You have to be well off in order to come over here. Yeah, I couldn't so, afford without without my company, without my work. I couldn't afford insurance. There's yeah. no way. I mean, most people can't. Average people can't afford health insurance. That's why there's such a big problem about it, and it makes Jason sick. It makes me sick too. Yep. Oh, it's Illinois. Illinois. Ooh, Chicago. that's my stomping grounds. His old stomping grounds. Chicago. Governor Pritzker has proposed a new tax on every gallon of beer made in the state, with brewers, including Charles St. Clair, coming out against it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's per gallon. Sorry, it's per gallon. Okay. Not... But still, that'll be passed on to each individual poor. Oh, yes. Absolutely. That's messed up. It's already expensive enough to go out. This is so bad for the economy and for business because people are more likely to stay at home and drink at home rather than go out because it's already expensive to go out. And then you're putting taxes yeah, on top then, of so, it. So if you're if you're giving money just to a large corporation like you know like a large supermarket corporation, mm -hmm. none of that money is going into the the local economy. If you're yeah. You know, if you're part of the uh, the whole local crowd, uh, you're not. It's not. It's not going to help you. It's not going to help you at all. Nope. And then people will go out of business. So much for <laughs> small businesses in America. Yeah, Jason says I don't doubt it. The state would charge a tax per syllable for talking. It'd have to break down each syllable. That'll be a lot of work. Somebody will have a job doing that. <clears throat> well, I know one brewery that is actually doing really well. They are okay. going to open a third brew pub. Ooh, I've never heard of this brew pub. Great notion brewing. Great notion. <clears throat> I've heard of them. I've I've actually heard of them. I've tasted a lot of their beer. Uh, they do fruit really well. They have um, they have a very good reputation for balancing massive flavors and mm -hmm. doing um doing those those fruit beers that like people try to stay away from they're really good at mm -hmm. balancing hop and fruit together so if you're uh if you're looking if you are near beaverton you should take a look at their new 2,000 square foot space. Hmm. Ah, Cedar Mill. Oh, Cedar Mill. I have no idea where Cedar Mill is. I don't it's either. It's a, store, a storefront in a plaza on Northwest Lost Springs Terrace, which is anchored by a market of choice. 
Wow, that mm. is a bold move. Moving in right you next think? to a market of choice. Because they have good beer too, right? Yeah, they have good, excellent, uh, they have they have excellent bottled beer. So, uh, yeah, that's a bold choice. Hmm. Okay. And it oh, says it joins that. Portland's Ex Novo in opening an outpost in the Beaverton area. So Beaverton's happening. If you if you don't get the apartment where you want, maybe you should go to Beaverton. <laughs> well, it's not close enough to the ocean. But Beaverton yeah, is a happening ocean. place. They are they are okay. a happening place. People who can't really get like outside of the area, that's really mm -hmm. gonna be useful for them. Okay. It's gonna feature 20 taps, a slimmed down food menu, and beer for purchase to go. Grab your keg mm -hmm. and grab some good beer. And while we're on Oregon. Um, I found an article. I've heard you talk about Philomath, right? Philo Philomath? Oh, Philomath. That is Philomath. Philomath. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Right next to us. Right next to us. Okay. Awesome. Well, this article is, is from Forbes.com, and they are really impressed with Philomath. They call it a culinary paradise. Pretty picture of a, um, a covered bridge. And it's, um, yeah, it says outside of Corvallis, uh, uh, it's, um, they, people pass by it on the way to better known stops in Willam Willamette. Willamette. It's, the Willamette w Valley. Will yeah. Will Will Willamette. Willamette. Will Amet. Will Amet. Will Amet. Will Amet. Will Amet. Will Amet. Okay. So it's, this is mostly about wine, which I love wine. So that's okay too. But um, it's we do pointing have out quite a Loomis few, Wine Company. Uh -huh. Yeah, we do have quite a few gorgeous brand spanking new winery places that, um, you know, their grapevines are just, you know, they're getting into that mm. mature stage where these people are starting to build, you know, they, they build these big, beautiful decks and they have lovely evening parties. And it's it is fantastic to come out here and take wine tours around the area. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been there? Uh, to Lumos? Have you been to any of these I've been, places? I've gone next uh -huh. to Lumos. I actually haven't done a wine tour in so long. Okay. And Philomath is, okay. I'm not, I would say yes. Philomath is definitely uh -huh. one for wine tours. I'm not sure it's a okay. culinary Paradise. And I don't know. I don't... Downtown Philoma I think is maybe... pretty small, but they have, um, they do have some, some absolutely gorgeous places to stop. This one talks about a place called the Dizzy Hen. It says it's only open for breakfast and lunch. Um, they said the food is fantastic. The majority of the menu is sourced locally they're famous for their french toast served with a side of homemade sausage mm, and they oh talk goodness. about gathering yeah gathering together farm <laughs> operates both a farm stand and a renowned farm to table restaurant i um, worked i worked on there not for them but i did do oh. I, I did soil samples on their property oh neat okay well i hope everything was cool. up to snuff yeah, they're well. They do have a a fantastic farm, and they also Good. they come to the farmers market here in Corvallis. Uh -huh. So if you just yeah. want to check out their produce, you can you know come to the okay. come to the farmers market and get some of their uh, some of their lovely vegetables. Cool. Sometime maybe if you um, have a car you've rented or something, you could go there and do um. Um, interviews with some of these people for very good. That would be neat, right? Oh, yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. If we ever get a sponsor, we'll say, hey, can you sponsor that? That would be cool. <laughs> that would be cool. That really would be cool. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind doing a wine tour. Oh, I love wine tours. Yeah, I, I love driver, wine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You definitely want a driver. You don't want to be driving yourself. That could be very bad. 
Uh, okay. I think I skipped. I skipped the Brewers Association sustainability benchmarking tool. Interesting. Okay. I think sustainability. This is, this is the only one I didn't actually read. Go ahead. Oh yeah, God. I haven't read it either. So spreadsheet based system. Mm. I'm not sure what. Uh, well, the Brewer, Brewers Ooh. Association benchmarking tool. Is this for craft brewers, I wonder? I think so. Uh, That's what it says. Okay. <clears throat> so this is in response. This, I believe, is in response to us saying, um, come up with identifiable terms that, mm -hmm. that you know, we can use. You know, craft has one definition. Independent mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. another. How do we tell what level the beer is on if we don't have, you know, like a absolute across across the bench actual industry benchmarks? I think mm -hmm. this is what's going to give us those benchmarks onto mm -hmm. what the resources are like and what the beer is like, uh, performance of of each brewery. I think that I think that might be what this is for. Well, it's actually um, literally environmentally sustainability benchmarking. It says um, share best practices for identifying how to use water more efficiently, generating less wastewater and solid waste, decreasing total total energy usage and reducing greenhouse gas em emissions oh so it's all about the it's about the environmental impact yeah i found it, it linked to an article that said that i'll put the second article on our hmm. google drive and i'll put it in our um twitch chat too yeah well this looks pretty interesting it's good that they're that's you know caring more. about that that's something to be um, that's important. I would imagine, especially for like some of the breweries that are in water strapped areas, like maybe, I don't know, Arizona. California. Yeah, California, someplace like that. They probably have to. Oh, and, yeah. And I think this is a literal tool because it says new users can choose from a basic version, version, which tracks 40 key performance indicators or an advanced version, which allows tracking of up to 39 key performance indicators. Um, and there's actually a link that says download tool. Uh, so that's kind of neat. Latest, latest version of the BA sustainability benchmarking tool is now available. Oh. Yeah. So I think that's a way for the industry as a whole to stay in business, which is good, and, and maybe decrease their um, what they use. Oh, uh, yeah, weight. tracking resource use is the first step in reducing resource use. Yeah, yeah because <clears throat> there are some there are some breweries that are managing to reuse the water in their system, but okay. others are not. Mm -hmm. So that that wastewater, where that wastewater goes is, you know, how much water are you wasting in your system? That's a good question. Uh, yeah. How much water can you save by actually pushing it through a filtration system or just using it in the cooling? Mm -hmm. That'd be interesting. That I would like be this good. tool. Especially I like from this tool a lot. Yeah, especially from a scientific perspective, which you do, you know, the agriculture perspective. I wonder if I wonder if they well, I guess I'd have to download the tool to figure out exactly everything in it. Yeah. I wonder if you have to be a member to get the tool. Download the tool. I'm clicking it. Sustainability benchmark. Members only. Log in. Yeah, members only content. So, I mean, that's... Uh, so you have to be a fair. member of the Brewers Association. <clears throat> I mean, I uh, for an independent or a craft brewer, that that actually might be an investment that 
that would be good to make, but mm -hmm. trying to putting it behind a paywall. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I, as a, as a Linux as a Linux user, I know. Okay. But if I they understand. developed it, they have oh to. If they developed it, though, I kind of get it. If the Brewers Association developed it, they need to recoup their money somehow. Because I don't know if they paid someone to do it. I don't know how they got it. So, I don't know. Uh, that is true. And they might have had to pay someone for research and do the tests and everything. So, I can kind of get that. Uh, now, see, they do have individual memberships. Okay, so you could you could join as as an individual, and I believe a Brewers Association membership actually does give you access to a range okay. of competitions. Oh, okay. As, far as, as you, I know, and so and yeah, the, you can submit your beer to a lot of different competitions within your state. Yeah, and I, I get that they have to pay. They probably put on the competition. And so I, I kind of get, I understand that they want you to join. I get it. Yeah. Just like the Writers Association or something, you know, which I'm not That's a member true. of. But. There, are, there are lots of writers. There are lots of different writers groups. I'm part of the Willamette Writers okay. Group. Okay. Uh, it's useful. It's useful yeah. for connecting and, mm -hmm. you know, getting access to information and mm -hmm. people and things like that. So mm -hmm. I understand it. I just. Uh, I know. I don't, I don't like paywalls. I really don't. I want, I, I want know. something. I know. I want it now. And I don't have a lot of money, people. But later on in the show, we'll talk about the. $15 purchase I made just before I got on the this call. I'm such a sucker for that stuff. Well, I think we've definitely gone through all the news, right? I think so. I think gone through the news. Okay. Now we get to talk about the show. Woo woo! Okay. Mm -hmm. Criminal UK. Yep. This is basically... <clears throat> interviewers interviewing suspects yeah i'm kind of surprised this type of show is so popular mm -hmm. i found it's not just in the uk it's all over italy I yeah think, there's or Spain, yeah it? there there are shows like this in exactly in italy mm -hmm. canada um a couple of other countries can't remember mm -hmm. the exact thing. I don't. I don't want to say ones that I don't know, but yeah, yeah they're they're all over the place. Mm -hmm. And it's such a simple concept, and yet it turns out to be pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. The very the I've... very the very first one actually caught me only because I had David Tennant in it. <laughs> Yes, that's my rain. That and Haley Atwell were my were my two reasons. <clears throat> so they caught me there. They said uh -huh. that was an excellent decision. I don't care what you had to pay David Tennant to be in that. It was worth that's it. That's why I started watching it. It was exactly. Worth it. I was like, <gasps> and you know, I just assumed. You know, I made an ass out of me. No one else, just me. I assumed he was the detective. Cause I'm, oh really? Yes, because of Broadchurch, I think. I still, I when I think oh, of oh, him yeah. and and crim, crime type shows, I think of Broadchurch. So I just assumed exactly. he was a detective, and when he was on the other side of the table, I was like, "What the what?" And I was <laughs> like, "Ooh, he's bad." Ooh. Of course, we know. You know, he's he hasn't always been the good guy. No, Jessica Jones. He like put chills yeah. in me. So yeah. I, we know he's capable of being very bad. It was just, he, he was very sociopathic in this. So they, um, they thought that he, so he's playing Edgar mm -hmm. and it, the, each show is labeled with the name of the suspect. Yep. And we've only got that's three true, episodes. That's true, Cyber. In Good Omens, he wasn't a saint either. Yeah, that's true, but he was fun. 
He wasn't really yeah, he particularly was evil. I mean, you know, I think he was misunderstood <laughs> in Good Omens. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, he didn't really want to do this stuff. He was just kind of there. It just, I mean, I think he even yeah. said something like, um, yeah, everyone else was going down to Earth, so I thought I would too. <laughs> It's like if everyone jumps out of heaven and falls to earth, would you too? And he did. Yep. So Edgar is accused of um, was it killing his own? Was molesting it his, and killing his stepdaughter? Molesting and killing his stepdaughter. That molesting <clears throat> and this was um, a very. Repetitively. This was a very. This was a very difficult one for me to start with. Yeah. I am really sensitive about, like, thinking about, like, children being hurt. Me too. But I got caught up because for the first 20 minutes, mm -hmm. it was nothing but no comment. Yep. I was like, say something! Really, you were thinking, say something? I was thinking, keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. If you didn't do it, keep your mouth shut. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess I guess it depends on your philosophy. I mean, if I thought I was being accused of that, I'd be like, hell no, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Why would I do that? She's my stepdaughter. I wouldn't do that. Are you crazy? I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Luckily, I, don't know. I mean... Luckily, you know, you're not saying anything is not it that's not supposed to be an in I know it's not supposed to be held against you. <clears throat> I know. But I mean they and went in fact they, they never but in fact they they never would have done anything else if he had kept saying no comment. It was it it was like the last fifteen minutes that mm -hmm. they had mm -hmm. to get him to say something. Mm -hmm. And then he finally, like, it's like he just explodes, like, with who he thought killed her. Well, I think he, I think that he figured out that eventually he would have to say something. I mean, some they would somehow or another they would get something out of him, and he seemed to be trying to push this lie. He seemed to be setting up this other person, the soccer coach. So I think mm -hmm. he was he strategically said that story because he was trying to lead them to that. He just didn't do a very good job of it. No, in fact, he gave them evidence that proved it was him. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what it was. Do you remember what what tipped them off? Um. Okay, it was the bruises. <clears throat> oh, that's so he right. Said, gosh, he was a he's a doctor. He's a doctor. So yeah. he said that, you know, she had bruises and if she was still alive, uh, if she was if she had been dead, the bruises wouldn't have showed. Right. But, but the instead they have, yeah. Instead they they started taking a closer look at it and found mm -hmm. Not just the bruises, because then they discovered that, oh, maybe she wasn't dead when she got put in the back of the car. She was alive in the back of the tr trunk, in the trunk of the car that whole time. And so, because she was still alive, there was a pattern that mm -hmm. showed up like on, on her shoulder or on her side yep. or something. From the, the mat. The comb pattern from the yep. mat in the car. Yep. And that makes absolute sense. So he gave them that. They may not even have been looking at that if he hadn't said that. Which is why if he had just kept his mouth shut. Yeah, that's right. They wouldn't have known anything. <clears throat> now, uh, as disturbing as the thought of a child being killed was, I found something else more disturbing the writers had him saying the day you dread as a father yeah. is the day you discover someone has had sex with your little girl. Yeah. Now, he he specifically said, you know, when it happens years earlier than it's supposed to, yeah. it's a nightmare. Yeah. And that 
that only disturbed me because that's that's the writer themselves writing that for him to say that's an, a whole industry's insistence that you're presenting women as never growing up the the fathers have to you know fathers have to view daughters as these completely dependent you know things they own that they should always be protected and shielded that they, they can't grow up to you know be strong independent women that made me flinch i didn't i didn't really get that um because, especially in hindsight that i know that he was making up that whole story i thought he was trying to make himself seem more loving by saying little girl you know, having that happen to my little girl. I think he was trying to make himself sound more like he was protective of her, that he cared about her. I was trying to, I think he was trying to make himself seem more like a father figure than he was. That's what I got. Like he, he was drumming up the little girl aspect because he was trying to make himself seem more, um, um, more sensitive than he was. That's oh I yeah, thought. that's true. That's true. But you know, if if you're dreading the day as a father <clears throat> that you learn your adult, um, your adult consensual, you know, mm -hmm. your adult mm -hmm. daughter has had sex consensually, and you dread that, mm -hmm. that's that's really sad. I mean, you know, it look if if your little girl happens to want to have sex when she's old enough and it's consensual, that should well, not be something that we're, you know, encouraging as a as a as a trope. I know he was trying to make himself seem, you know, oh, more sensitive to this little girl. But it really kind of rubbed me that they wouldn't want their kids to, they wouldn't want these little girls to grow up and become sexual beings. Well, I got Which it. They, we do. Yeah. Well, I got it. He said the day you dread is the day you discover someone has had sex with your little girl years earlier than it's supposed to happen. I thought he was saying. No, he, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. I was saying, I thought he was saying that he understood that it would happen years later when she's an adult. But I thought he was saying that the nightmare is when it happens when she's a little girl. That's what I thought. Well, he said he did say the day you dread his father is the day you discover someone has had sex with your little girl. Mm -hmm. um, then, um, then after that, he came mm -hmm. back and said, "But when it happens years early, it's a nightmare." Well, that's what I meant. Years early yeah. than when you accept that they would. You accept that they will maybe when they're seventeen or eighteen or nineteen. But I got the sense that he was saying the nightmare is when it happens years earlier than it should have, like when they're 11 or something. But I don't know. I don't, mm -hmm. I, I really thought he was saying it's, you know, that you dread as a father any day you discover. I don't think so. That your little girl's had sex. Maybe. I don't know. I might have to go back and watch it. I didn't get that. I thought he meant just when you know, she's a little girl. Huh? Now I do I I really did like mm -hmm. the way that he did he broke quote unquote yeah. broke yeah. and you know actually did give them information yeah mm -hmm. that was good writing mm -hmm. right there it was it very really was. tense extremely tense mm -hmm. extremely tense because you kind of wanted him. Because you, I thought he was innocent. Yep. I thought he was innocent. I kind of thought he was too. It was so hard to tell. That's why he's such a good actor. It was really hard to tell. But then when they started, when, when they, they started with the evidence against him and I really looked at him and I thought about his story, I was like, it's him. I started saying, it's him. He did it. Yeah. It's like oh, <clears throat> When they finally came out with the pattern on, yeah. you know the pattern on her skin in the back mm. of the car. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's him. It's him. <laughs> and I felt sad because 
you know, I'm, I'm thinking about the mother and how she's going to feel that she brought that into their household. She brought David Tennant's character into the household by marrying him. And I'm just thinking yeah. about how she'll feel. And I'm like, oh, God, that's so horrible. Oh, yeah, I can't. I mean, I that would be that would feel like in the ultimate betrayal to your own yes. child. Yes. That you gave them that opportunity. Yeah. She would probably think, I can't believe I didn't see it. Which, you know, it's not her fault. Not by a mile. It's not her fault. But I can imagine how she would feel. She would feel like, how could I not see this? How could I do this? How could I let this into our house? And she would probably feel like she put her child in harm's way. She did this, even though she didn't. Not by a long shot. It was his fault. But I, I imagine she would still feel horrible. Yeah. Now, the the next story, <clears throat> I, uh, so, so there are only three stories yep. so far, so far. Mm -hmm. um, so out of 10, what would you give Edgar? Edgar, I would give it an eight. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. I thought the writing was good enough and I was pretty much glued to it, like, the whole time there could have been improvements and mm -hmm. as i said that whole thing about the father daughter kind of thing kind of brought it down a little for me but an eight out of mm -hmm. ten was pretty good yeah daisy <clears throat> was much different than ed kerr in her personality mm -hmm. oh much different she was kind of trashy like a you know when you think of um, I guess I don't, I'm trying to think of a nice way to say no. it. No. Mouthy, she trashy mouthy, Londoner. Yeah. Well, tr <laughs> yeah. Trashy. Yeah. She, trashy. Yeah, she, was she was trashy. Tra she was. She was pretty trashy. That is very exactly insolent, how they very portrayed ignorant. her. Mm -hmm. um, now I don't know, you know, I mean, I know here in America we have rednecks, so yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure. God. What what in London well, would they it, back alley? I'm I'm try I mean I'm trying not to sound. I mean, she sounds it's like a East East London type accent, but I'm trying not to put everyone down in the East End because I love the East End. I would probably live in the East End because I'm a broke ass woman. I would probably live in the East End if I had to live in London. But yeah, it's like an East End type accent. An East End type of yeah uh, attitude. in it. She said, instead of, isn't it, she says, in it. In it. And things like that, yeah. So, yeah. Definitely very, um... I mean, she course. just I don't came know. out of the gates talking, mm -hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And exactly, she seemed ignorant. Ignorant and insolent. Ignorant Got an and attitude. Insolent. Cockney. Cockney. That's right. There Thank you. you. I couldn't Cockney. think of it. She was Cockney. Yeah. Cockney. It was <laughs> bug to me. I was um, like, there's a word for it. It's not a mean word, yeah. you know, it's just what it is. Now I know there is All right, a isn't it? All right. <laughs> now I know there's a regulation that they have to inform the suspect that they're being recorded and mm -hmm. let her know everybody who is in the room but they yeah. told her specifically that she didn't need to put on the act because there was nobody behind the glass yeah i don't, think I don't know if to lie about i don't that. know I don't if know. that's illegal or not i mean i don't know they're still being watched by those law officials shouldn't yeah. she know about them I would think. I don't know. I, they don't seem overly burdened about following the law, though. They didn't seem particularly concerned that they did everything yeah. lawfully. Yeah, mm -hmm. by the time we get to the next one, we'll see that. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, especially with the, the the detective who they found out a big secret about the detective, and they still let him go back in the interview room. Yeah. The big secret about well, that detective. <clears throat> well, the first thing I And they I let noticed... him go back into the interview room. Mm. 
So the first thing I noticed was um, one of the investigators, and I don't even know if this is relevant. It may not be. One of the investigators has a coffee cup, but yeah. Paul goes to the coffee machine. Yeah. Now the coffee machine uh -huh. becomes an issue in the in the next episode. I but I thought it was really weird. Yeah. This guy had a cup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Paul goes to the machine with a, a paper cup. You know what? That whole thing came out of left field to me. I was not paying attention to the coffee machine or anyone's coffee cups. When the lawyer in the in the last one started talking about the coffee machine and stuff, I was like, what is he talking about? That totally like caught me by surprise. I was not following that at and all. And that's why, that's why I was... That's why I was glad in Stacy that I paid attention to that tiny uh, little coffee machine bit. Too. I, I, mm -hmm. So I watch these shows and I start paying attention to like everything. Like good. Every little like, good things that are written on the cups. And, you know, like mm -hmm. now that's important. They thought, I'm glad you do that. They finally, now, remember, Stacy finally like uh, confesses. Right. And everybody right. thought. Everybody thought, great, got a confession. Well done. Yeah, yeah. it seemed plausible, but it, it wasn't really a true confession. <clears throat> it wasn't, and they brought everybody back from, yeah. from leaving to go to their Christmas dinner. They're all going to their Christmas yep. dinner. They bring yep. everybody back into the room and tell her, yep. we don't believe you. <laughs> nope. Which I thought that was very unusual because then more often when I think of detectives, I think about them going with the most plausible explanation and being like, okay, we're done. You don't really think about cops second guessing themselves and say, no, that confession wasn't true and, and making everyone start all over again. That's just not something you think of happening. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> her whole big secret um, mm -hmm. Was that she was protecting her sister? Yeah, her sister. Her sister is. Her sister invited this guy to start staying in her house. Yep. Apparently, nasty, nasty Stacey, guy. Yeah. Apparently, Stacy started sleeping with him. Like yeah. she couldn't help herself. Oh, well, I guess that's <clears throat> some of that kind of trashy aspect. I guess because he was like he was really ugly toward he's her. He's violent, sister. yeah. He's horrible. Violent he's a horrible and person. Used her, mm -hmm. and I don't know. I kind of fell off it at this point. Yeah. I felt like it was tropish. Yeah. Well, that's a lot of these big, criminal shows are. Yeah. That's the big secret. Like you're sleeping with this guy. And that's the big secret. She feels like, guilty. They, she feels very guilty. And then yeah, they kind of they kind of brought it back because her sister came to her and said, there's a rat in the house. Yep. Let's kill him. Mm -hmm. But I thought for for one second, I thought I thought she meant Stacy. Uh, yeah, I started to get confused. Yeah, <laughs> like, Stacy's the rat. There's a rat in the house. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sleeping with your boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. And, and Stacy said something very disparaging about her sister. Something like her sister was too, I don't remember exactly what she said, but insinuating that she was too plain to, to yeah, to be able to be what, what he needed or something. But that Basic. was very protective. Yeah. Okay. It was exceptionally protective. She was trying to portray her sister as such a, exactly, a plain That's Jane good type point. person. Yeah. She couldn't, you know, there was no way she could she possibly. She wouldn't hurt anyone. Of, no, she wouldn't hurt anyone. She didn't have she any maliciousness. Even, yeah, she couldn't even take a walk on the wild side when it came to sex. So mm -hmm. how could she think of murder? <laughs> That's a good point. That could have been more, a more way of protecting her instead of being just kind of, you know, kind of nasty to her sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in the end, 
she walked out of the house because her sister was going to do it. Mm -hmm. But she had to go back and be a part yeah. of it. Yeah. So ultimately, they both were a part of it, right? I couldn't remember. Was it just the sister or was it also well, Stacy? <clears throat> There's the thing is that they released Stacy because they knew they wouldn't get Stacy on anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were just they just they just released her. Yeah. And they were gonna go full on after her sister. Yeah. For for murder. You know, part of me feels bad because even though, yes, it was the sister who did it, the sister was also abused. And, you know Yes. Yeah. And that's that's where I feel like it it wasn't just a tropish kind of yeah. episode. Yeah. Because all of a sudden I started thinking to myself, what would I do in that situation? Well, I'd one, I'd I'd either kick him out of the house mm -hmm. or I'd leave the house. Yeah. I mean, I've got C A R D V, and you know, I, there are lots and lots of resources for me to depend right. upon but i'm an entirely different i'm in an entirely different class than she is you are and when you think i mean she may have been poorly educated we don't know if she's anything like her sister i mean her sister seemed on the low end of the education level so i mean and she may if she came from an abusive household as a child she may not have been taught to stand up for herself I mean, she may have That's felt That's true. This frozen. may be the only way. Yeah, they may, they may think that this is the only way they can protect themselves. Mm -hmm. That they're not aware that there may be resources. But even if there are resources out there, would they be valued enough to be given those resources? Some people may not know to take advantage of them. Or may they may think it makes them weak. Or... You know. That's true, but I mean, I mean the way that the way that the resources look at them, um, mm -hmm. they're from such a lower class in society. Yeah. Yeah. If they said, you know, help, would they mm -hmm. be given that help, or would they be kind of shivvied out the door? Like, eh, I really don't know. Not worth it. I really that's don't what know. It made me think, yeah, that's mm -hmm. what it made me think about. So I guess. I guess the episode kind of worked. So it's hard to judge. I mean, I think about it. Would if I were the detective and I realized that Haley Atwell, um, Stacy wasn't being truthful, would I just let her go and be punished anyways? I mean, I wonder about that. What would I have done? I mean, uh, the the honest thing, of course, is what the detective did: pull her, pull yeah. Stacy back in and get to the absolute truth. <clears throat> That's the honest thing. But it does. It, it's one of those disparities when, even though it's the right thing, it doesn't feel like the right thing. It doesn't. It doesn't make you feel good. It's the right thing, but it does not make you feel good. That's true. I mean, we don't know. We can only assume what's going to happen after mm -hmm. that. Yeah. We don't know if, um, because maybe because of extenuating circumstances, yeah. her sister gets off because you know she felt her life was in danger. Maybe mm -hmm. we don't know what happens afterward. We don't know. All and we they know don't is, tell you. All we know, mm -hmm. yeah, we don't. They don't tell you. All we know mm -hmm. is. Stacy was trying to take the fall mm -hmm. for her sister because mm -hmm. she felt that she was such a scut for sleeping with yep. her sister's boyfriend. Yeah, and she was such she a bad never, sister. She felt like she could never be anything else. Yeah, and that's another part of the low end of education and the low self esteem. Um, yeah. You know, she felt like she wasn't worth being free and she needed to be locked up, which is very sad. And it just makes me oh, feel yeah. sad. It just, you know, there were, there were no winners in this episode. Which is no, sad. there actually, there actually, uh, there actually weren't. I mean, mm -hmm. she's, if her sister winds up in jail, then she's gonna, she's gonna be in that position of i sent my sister to jail for the rest yeah, of her life she's gonna feel like crap and she already feels like crap and she and may her sister's become gonna find, yeah her sister's gonna find out anyway her yeah. sister's gonna find out that she was sleeping with her boyfriend so right and so her oh, sister may hate her even more <laughs> uh, 
who knows? Who knows whether her sister is going to hate her or whether her sister would recognize that she tried to do the right mm -hmm. thing and just couldn't figure out how. She got caught. She tried. I mean, yeah. her sister may not know this, but Stacy did try to take the blame and almost got away with taking the blame. Except for there was a very determined detective. I'm pretty sure that when they, qu I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, if they questioned Stacy's sister, mm -hmm. they would tell, that, or they, they would tell her what Stacy did. Yeah, in order I would to hope make so. Her give up. Yeah, in order to make mm -hmm. her, you know, confess faster. That would be good. That would be a solid for Stacy. Yep. Well, the next one is, uh, it started out tropish. Uh-huh. Jay. Jay is a trucker. And I mm -hmm. have to, I have to confess, I didn't mm -hmm. watch the whole episode. <gasps> oh. I got 12 minutes from the end. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. But I don't mind if you spoil it. I, I'm having a hard time re remembering. I just remembered... <clears throat> He, he was a driver. They were trying to determine whether he knew what was in his truck or not. He was... Um, yeah, be yeah, because they suspected there were immigrants in the truck, and they're trying to find the truck. So, so they're, they're not trying left to, to die. To tell, yeah, they're, he's trying to get, them, get him to tell them where mm. is the truck. Yeah. And the very, very first thing I noticed when they brought him in... Mm -hmm was hey look it's the coffee cup what yeah. is the h for like it was set so mm -hmm. far ahead of the investigator there was no missing it the the cup was just there so and big the with handle, the h yeah and the handle was on the left side now i told oh. you I, I get into this i never i didn't even notice that so it's for left-handed people so i'm like is he if he's right-handed they screwed this up if it's left-handed mm -hmm. then there's something odd about the cup mm. and well, it's also mm -hmm. weird it's also weird that unlike the other episodes this mm -hmm. followed the actual timeline of the video mm -hmm. did you notice that oh no i didn't notice it like when it <clears throat> so they call a break at like uh, 14 minutes and it was uh -huh. exactly 14 minutes oh, into the into I the, didn't in, notice that into the, well, that makes into, sense. Into the yeah if, interview it's it's it weird supposed to be yeah well it kind of makes sense because if you think each interview is an hour you know it's like we're watching yeah. the actual interviews in real time so that actually kind of makes sense I mean, Edgar took like two days to break down. Well, but we saw him at the end, though. Remember? The video exactly. started. They'd already been holding him for like 20 hours. Exactly. They'd already been holding him for so long. Yeah. Uh, Jay, they brought him in, and he, very typical big trucker yeah. type. You know, mm -hmm. you think about, oh, what does a trucker look like? This is the guy you think of. Yeah, he was a very brawny guy. Yeah. And within just 14 minutes, they mm -hmm. started to break him. Mm -hmm. You know, telling him all about, you know, uh, immigrants they knew, showing him pictures mm -hmm. and telling them the tortures these immigrants could go through. Mm -hmm. And it, and then uh, they called a halt at 14 minutes. And they said, they said Hugo, and I think that's what the H is for. Yeah, that's cup. his cup. But mm -hmm. that's, that was the only way I knew that it was Hugo's cup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is, this is a brand spanking new interviewer. Yep. Poor he's, guy. I think he's, he's, um, I think he's new. But um, the head detective at one point told him, I wouldn't have brought you on the team if I didn't think you could do it. Yeah. Yeah, but we learn a lot about well, Hugo. <clears throat> mm -hmm. the, 
the poor trucker mm -hmm. becomes after they take the break mm -hmm. the poor you know the poor trucker is is absolutely rattled because they found and i had to look this up i don't know what that is no <laughs> i didn't know truckers have what they call tachographs there's a card there's a machine that you put in your truck mm -hmm. and it it um it records where you go mm -hmm. it records the stops you make um probably like the like the pullover places you have to go mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. records it on a card okay now supposedly it's illegal to remove the card while you're on a job mm -hmm. they found okay. the card in a in a what they called a food recycler i guess it's like a trash can <laughs> i don't know they found the card somewhere because he had tossed it okay i'm <laughs> Mm -hmm. But it only mm -hmm. specified his route up to a certain point. So they still needed him to tell them uh. where he left the truck. So they go back in with yeah. this information. And he because uh, poor Jay became so mm -hmm. rattled that he asked for a lawyer. And at this point, yeah. I'm like, well, I don't feel just, too sorry for Jay. <laughs> Oh, well, well, I don't know, because, I don't know, do you remember if they found the truck? <laughs> they did, and there was nothing in there. So, presumably, oh. the people he was working for, yeah, it was empty. So, presume, so and I don't either, think they either ever they got found the, either, them. Either they got the immigrants out, or there was nothing in it to begin with. Right, which makes me think they can't hold him on anything, but they ended up acting like they were still going to prosecute him. And I remember thinking, what for, though? All they can say is he drove an empty truck. So I don't know what... Yeah. But, I mean, at um, so at 27 minutes in, mm -hmm. the new investigator made a serious mistake because, it like, they started trading words, right? Mm -hmm. The lawyer and the mm -hmm. investigator. And yeah. it became more about lawyer versus investigator yeah. than investigator versus suspect. Yeah. It, it which got was really huge, testy. huge mistake. He, you know, yeah. and he then fell the for it. Of, yeah. The issue of the trap. coffee came up mm -hmm. because the lawyer said, Have you even offered my, have you even offered my client a drink? Yeah. What do you have in your cup? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, how did he know that? I have no idea how he even knew that. That's an astute lawyer. Um, because he was sitting in that. He had been sitting in. That's why they kept showing him the yeah. lawyer mm -hmm. sitting in the hallway. Yeah, he was in the hallway waiting. Of, mm -hmm. Yeah, he had plenty of time to notice. One, there was a coffee machine. Mm -hmm. And um, two, mm -hmm. there was definitely coffee mm -hmm. in the cup. Yeah. Um, but he also no the the uh, the lawyer also mm -hmm. noticed at some point that Hugo so had a flask in his yeah. jacket. Yeah, pocket. yeah. And uh, so he started asking, "Where did you get the coffee? Is there uh -huh. a machine in the other room?" Yeah. And Hugo said, hey, "No." Uh, and he should never he should never have that's what this is a huge mistake yeah. he never should have offered that information yeah yeah he should have said no comment he should have said no <laughs> and comment and this is the detective we're talking about not not the suspect mm -hmm. this is all about Hugo, the detective Hugo should have kept it on the suspect the yeah. entire time and not but, fallen mm -hmm. for the trap yeah but yeah. as soon as as soon as they start bringing it up, I was like, "Oh snap! Yeah, there there is no coffee machine in there because even the other guy came out to the machine and got a coffee. Mm -hmm. So he didn't lie about that. Mm -hmm. But when they mentioned that there was a flask in his pocket, the um the the other investigator, oh, what was his name again? Um, I can't Paul. Remember. Paul. Mm -hmm the tall black dude 
Yeah, I love that oh, actor. He's been in a ton of stuff. He's cool. He, is he walks cool. over, walks over to Hugo's pocket, takes out the flask, and takes a sip of it, and mm -hmm. discovers that uh, you know Hugo has a little tipple in that yes. uh, in that flask. No, this was this was behind the glass. This wasn't in with the yeah. suspect and the lawyer. This was private. But yeah, he he figured it out. It's very bad, and I do not agree with their decision to send Hugo back in there because if they did have a case, I think it could totally be thrown out by you know, saying that the detective is inebriated, I would think any case could be thrown out. That's true. Um, what they were, they, that's why they discussed what is our actual purpose. Yeah. If our purpose is to make sure that there's a case after we find the truck, we need mm -hmm. to stop the investigation right now. Yeah. If our purpose is to find the people That's in true. the truck, we need to send Hugo back in there That's if true. nothing is wrong. That's true. And that was their main objective is to find those people. Yeah. And I understand that. I don't mm. think, I don't think any, I don't think there's really any realistic way they could, they could still get him on anything other than mm. a minor a minor charge of, uh, you know, like uh, getting rid of that card. Yeah, something like that, which that's not really something I think they could lock someone up for. It's so minor. Might get a ticket or something. True. That is I think true. by the end, yeah, because when they found the truck, it was empty. So whoever was smuggling them in, it seems like must have found the truck before and got yeah. them out. So that was but all a waste. We're definitely not going to see Hugo again. No, I, I don't know if he'll be fired because um, at the, they another have to. Well, not necessarily. You you probably stopped before this. It turned out the head detective knew all the time. You know, there was that strange person there. Everyone's like, "Why is he here? Who is he?" I thought it was internal affairs. Remember that that odd guy who didn't who was there for no reason. Who was With auditing glasses? I think so. Wait, was that the guy that said, I've only just started working with you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He seemed like he was kind of auditing and no one knew why he was there. I thought he was internal affairs. Turns out the lead detective already knew about Hugo's on duty drinking and had consulted with the higher beings who, whoever the people in charge and they had sent um like an intervention type person to monitor him and that's who that guy was yeah oh so, snap mm -hmm. so they already knew the lead detective already knew so i mean it could be one of those things where they may get him in some kind of treatment and give him another shot i don't know but i, I thought know. for sure I thought for sure that that type of offense mm -hmm. would be an automatic firing your, you know, you are out of here. Especially on duty in the precinct in front of a lawyer and the suspect. That's brazen. It's one thing if you go into the, now I'm not saying any of this is right. Don't get me wrong. But it's one thing if you're on duty and you go into a bar and you have something. That's wrong too. Don't get me wrong. That's wrong too. But this is brazen putting it in his coffee in the interview room. That's beyond brazen. I mean, I've never heard of that. That's insane. So what yeah, I thought was, mm -hmm. what I thought was really amazing mm -hmm. was the lawyer, how the lawyer knew to peg him on it. I, I, that's, that came out of left field. Like I said, it came out of left field. That guy was really paying attention and he didn't oh, seem really? like he was paying attention. Seriously, yeah. yeah, he's good. And when we saw him in the hallway, he just looked bored. I had no idea. I thought, was... That's why I thought to myself, so the other guy's coming out for coffee, but there's no mm -hmm. machine. And yet this guy has a coffee cup. Mm -hmm. Why is there a coffee cup if there's no machine? Yep. And why is there no machine for coffee? <laughs> that seems and, so old fashioned. Right. right. But, and and that he took the chance to call him out that it was alcohol. 
I mean, I would have never thought that. I would have thought, well, maybe he there's a refrigerator and he had juice and it's juice. I mean, I would have never in a million years thought it was alcohol, but the lawyer called him out on it. And I'm like, whoa, that came out of left field to me. I was like, dang, okay. You know, I don't, I, I kind of, I uh, going back a little bit, I don't, I don't know if American truckers have tachographs in their trucks, but that seems like a good idea. They have something. Clint's brother is a truck driver, and I know he's always complaining about how they monitor him, like um, his brakes, like whenever he stops and everything, it's like electronically monitored. So I think they have yeah. something. Well, brakes, especially here in certain parts of California, are exceptionally important, especially in winter. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I understand why, you know, they would have to even do an inspection. You know, I mean, we do have inspection points. Mm -hmm. We pass them all the time. Mm -hmm. um, why you'd have to pull over, you know, to confirm that, you know, you, you have the load you're supposed to have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've, you've gotten your maintenance taken care of and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I've seen the damage an out of control truck can cause. Yeah, you got that one it, right. I've seen it first. Yeah, I've seen it firsthand in yeah. in in California on on the I five, mm -hmm. where there's a very long low slope going oh, down. Oh wow! Uh huh. And a trucker's brakes went, wow. and he did not take the chance to go on the runaway ramp. Uh -huh. He plowed through seven cars. Oh Jesus! Them killing almost 19 people jesus <laughs> christ my god yeah. i mean Holy talk about shit. Shut, they shut down the i-5 that section of the i-5 yeah. for almost a week i would think so that is horrible oh my god it was god. awful so I, yeah. I understand why monitoring is necessary um yeah. yeah and if you're trying to find a truck that's 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 carrying obvious illegal goods like immigrants who are potentially locked in the mm -hmm. back of the truck yeah that's that's really awful yep and they were getting very close to the point where the immigrants would die yeah because they didn't it was cold <laughs> yep so yeah it was horrible and i mean the dude was obviously working for some illegal people he was obviously doing shady stuff. I just don't know well, if yeah, they can but, prove it. But he's a trucker. If you if you were, you know, riding the financial line and that's all you could do. Yeah. And you couldn't do anything else. And you were offered a decent amount of money mm -hmm. for doing just this one job. Yeah. Wouldn't that be tempting? I guess. I don't know. But it's just scary because, I mean, if it's true that he didn't know what was in the back, I mean, yeah. just the fact that he, he, he could have been taking anything. He didn't know. He could have been taking dead bodies. I mean, he didn't know. So that almost makes it worse that he didn't know because, I mean, he could have been carrying anything. He just had no idea. Yeah. He could have been carrying heroin. I mean, it's just scary. Yeah. No, I know Cybernaut. I know they do have way stations, but way stations don't always open the back of the trucks. If the weight is within a like a specific amount, yeah, you know, I'm gonna send them on through. So, if you have a truck that has the listed weight and the the mm -hmm. listed weight hasn't shifted by an yeah. enormous amount, yeah, if there's nothing really wrong with the truck, there shouldn't be any reason to ask them to pull over for an inspection. Yeah. You know? I mean, I guess it depends on, I would imagine they have falsified papers. So their falsified papers yeah. may say they're hauling furniture. And, yeah, of and, that specific weight. Yeah. Right. And so there's really no way to tell unless you, unless they have like a way to scan it and see that there are more bodies in there. But I don't know if they do that. Maybe they uh, should. They definitely don't have, they don't have that here. I'm not sure that would be. Uh, because that still is private property. That's so true. Would that be, you know, strictly legal? Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess the ro I guess you could make 
you could make the argument that the Oregon roads, that like mm -hmm. the, the Oregon interstate roads, belong mm -hmm. to the Oregon Department of Transportation. Yeah. They don't belong to the private citizenship. So they could say, you know, we get to scan every car that comes along if well, we want to. I think, I think if it's a commercial vehicle, they do they have the right, I would think. Just like if you're going to an airport, they have the right to search your bag. So, the TSA for truckers. Maybe. Oh, I would God, think so. Slow down to snail's pace. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Sai says they do inspections here at the border and crossing back and forth to Arizona. So they do do inspections. Oh, yeah. Like down this. in the south. Yeah. Because yeah. that's definitely where they're checking for people. Well, yeah. It's people smuggling. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not just people smuggling, but people going back and forth that are illegal immigrants. Yeah. They do check for that all the time. So that makes sense. Well, I've I've finished my uh, pumpkin last treat. I finished my beard, too. I'm going to start on... <gasps> High Live from Florida, Cigar City, where I've, I've been there. This is a man, this is a massive 7.5%. Yeah. But oh my god, if oh Lola, I'm so glad you introduced me to this because yep. if I could buy mm -hmm. a six pack, if I could buy a case of this stuff, I would and it's an IPA and it's 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 drinkable. It's a it's that's a, a grocery store beer here. here. That's yeah, in every it's grocery a, store. It's pretty good. It is a very drinkable IPA. Mm -hmm. Like it it's like it's juicy to me. Mm -hmm. It's like it's super aromatic mm -hmm. and it's super it's juicy. Mm -hmm. But the, the hops don't kill me the way Thank like goodness. The northwest northwest yes. hop do. That's a Florida hop. Not the yeah, that's that's the way we do IPAs. Mm. Mm -hmm. Like the the bitterness flows over your tongue and then goes back yeah. into the ocean. Yeah, it's it's, it's to. not too and overwhelming. All mm -hmm. Exactly, and all you're left with is like the the orange and uh, mandarin I love and that. mandarin flavors. I love the Very the delicious. citrus type hops. I love that. Yeah, that's a good one. I remember. I haven't had one in a while, but I remember I always liked that one. Uh, Yay, well, Cigar City! I am gonna let you. Tell us about the wonderful oh my goodness. You and I will be right back. Okay, so last time we did Humble Bundle. Well, I don't remember if it was last time, but um, Humble Bundle right now, one of its bundles is Coral, a huge coral bundle. And so $25, I got it. And one of the things it included is a video editing video video editing software and it really really reminds me of the adobe i used to use and um i've been trying to edit our videos for scanner drone um i got a little bit far but then i just had to stop because i had to go to bed um and i'm still, still getting used to opening the dang thing let me see open I, i'm trying to remember if i can screen share um let me i'm going into studio projects new movie open so let me see if i can screen share um uh, oh here i is i'm i'm trying to see if i can screen share do you remember if i can screen share uh there should be on the lower left of your Let's screen see. should have share your screen a little box there should be a box, a hand, yeah. and a open closed tabs. Okay, well before I screen, I'm gonna try to open up the um the the movie that I've been working on. Um, the one thing I have found with the Corel um, Studio project is I have to actually go to the file and open up the file that I'm making. If I just try to open up the program itself, mm -hmm. it just kind of stalls and never opens. So it is, it's, it's kind of, 
Oh. Yeah. It, now, are you you're using this on Windows or using it on Linux? I think it's only Windows. I didn't. The weird thing is when I downloaded it, it just had one .exe version, which which I think is .exe yeah. is only Windows, isn't it? .exe. Yeah, that's that's Windows. Okay, I didn't see a way. No, I'm just making sure. Um, I the the program may mm -hmm. need an update. Well, I just bought, I just got it though. Well, anyway, there are updates for programs all, there are updates for programs all the time. Okay. Well, I found that, okay, I, I opened it up. So I'm going to share. I'm going to try. Hold on. I want to share that. It doesn't seem to quite be working right. Don't let me share. Why doesn't it let me share? Oh, there's, there's a dog. Hold on. I don't understand what's happening. Is it sharing? Well, I, your, well, I saw your screen for a second. No. Do you see it? I saw your screen for a second, but now it's back on you. No speak. Let me. I'm just going to do my entire screen. That seems to be the only way I can do it. All right. So I'm sharing my entire screen. Do you see it? Do you uh, see this? Hang on. Uh. No. <laughs> No. Hang on a second. We're uh, okay. um. No, speak. There we go. There we go. You see it? Okay. Yeah, All I right. can see it. This is just one of the many programs I downloaded from the bundle, from Humble Bundle, the Corel um, bundle. And this is, I mean, this is a full-on editing program. It really reminds me of the Adobe I used to pay thirty dollars a month for. Um, I'm getting the hang of wow. it. Yeah, that's um. There's the opening. There's the um, the bulk of the video. And there's like little text things, and you can. It's very easy to add transition. Um, and effects. You can even, yep, yeah, effects. There's the effects right there. Oh, and cool. you can even do a voiceover. Like if you just want to, um, it's over here. Some the split clips. I use that a lot. Where you. I split it in half. Somewhere there's voiceover. You can do a voiceover. Oh, that's awesome. This is really, so when really you do, good. When you do, so when you do a voiceover, do you just add a add a voice track and no, you record it. You can just record oh, it. Oh, you straight. record it from the yes. program. Yes. Oh my goodness. It's insane. That's pretty cool. I lost it. I can't find where it is. But it's here somewhere. And it's just do a voiceover. So it's really cool. Oh, and you hey. can do titles very easily. Create titles. Oh, excellent. Yeah. You can see, I actually added a bunch of mask tracks. I didn't mean to. I didn't know quite what I was doing. And now I don't quite know how to get them out. But uh, I, there's, I, I got well, some you're ahead of me. I don't even know what a mask track is. Oh, I don't I'm either. Not... I just added them. <laughs> That actually looks like it. It looks like the 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 humble bundle was really worth it. It was, and now this is just one program. I've got humble bundle up. Um, here I'll close out of that. I don't. I'm gonna end up doing the the mirror thing where. Oh, here's another thing. It 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 gets stuck a lot. Not as bad as Caden Live did. Okay, there's humble. Now I'll show you um, what all came with the Corel, and then I'll show you what I bought today. This, I bought this um, like a week ago. It's three days left. That's it right That Get Corel Painter, Pinnacle Studio 23, which is what you just saw, Boda Mirage. So let me go to my purchases. And can you still see my screen? Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is the $25. Got me. Gravit Designer Pro for one year. I don't know what that is. Particle Shop. I don't know what that is, but it says Lifetime Perpetual License. Photo Mirage. Um, Lifetime Perpetual. Paint Shop Pro. Oh. Yeah. Wow. All this for $25. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Aftershot. Painter Essentials. Um, Photo Mirage Express for Paint Shop Pro. Griffic Studio, Parallels Toolbox, Corel Painter, and then what I just showed you, P 
Pinnacle Studio 23 Ultimate. So that was $25 freaking dollars. Oh, it does Mac too. So I guess it doesn't do Linux, but it does oh, Windows okay. and Mac. I mean, how freaking awesome is that? So brush That's pack excellent. and you get brush packs. I, I mean, I'll never use all of this because I'm not a visually, I've, I'm a little bit of visually artistic person, but not a completely visual artistic person. So I don't know. I, I kind of, I like the stuff you yeah, do. Thank you. I like the stuff you do. Yeah. You're, and you're definitely a creative person. Thank so, you. I mean, if ever you decided to dive into mm -hmm. it, this it's would here. definitely help you out. And it's lifetime for most of it. So I've got it. It's yeah. here. And I'll show you what I bought today for $15. This we've still got, um, I think we've still got like 15 days or 16 days on this. Um, woo! Sorry, that went really fast. So this, wait, is, is this the, it? the book? Yes. I'm getting a little confused. I'm trying to get to the book. Okay. Humble bun Book Bundle, Bundle of Bundles by Open Road Media. $15 for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And there's let's see. Seven, there's 17 days left on, yeah. on, this, on this bundle. So you got plenty of time. And please use our link. Um, we'll, we'll put the link on here when, at, when we're done. Um, so what did I get? I got the Dragon Back Series 1 to 3. The Age of Unreason, the Roger Angle Baseball Collection. Oh, uh, that's um, that's a Hallmark movie now. Uh, the novels of Madeline Leonga, which I have most of her books anyways, but that's nice. Mm, now does... the Dragon Back series. Mm -hmm. oh, I've never heard of that. So have good. you heard of that? I've never heard of yes. it. Yes, they're so okay. good. I've they're got really them now. Good. Um, and they, it doesn't show the authors, but I know it said that weren't there some Octavia Butler books? Well, there is. Yeah, there's Octavia Butler. There's uh, Timothy Zahn. Uh -huh. There. Uh, oh, openbarmedia.com. Thomas Noguchi. Uh -huh. Robert McCammon. Peter Blauner. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fred Rosen. Dave Duncan. <sighs> the Song of Earth and Power is by greg bear is actually is actually pretty good too it, okay the octavia butler alone is really awesome but wow, look at that that's a lot those are a lot a lot of books <laughs> it's giving me it's giving me ads for pinnacle studio that's kind of oh. creepy I'm like all <laughs> right i know i already bought it don't you know i already bought it okay so yeah, it looks like there cool. there are a lot of mysteries in here. Uh, there's Hello. some there's some fiction. Oh, R. A. Salvatore. Oh yeah, I've seen him before. On, he does a lot of Star Wars books. I saw him at Dragon Con one year. He's really good. Madeline Langle. I love her. She's like my favorite. I love her so much. Ever since I was yeah, a kid. Yeah, true crime, true crime, and oh yeah. Mm -hmm. What a fantastic Lots of stuff. Bunch of books. And I love it because you can get the Moby version, which plays extremely well on a Kindle. Um, or you can do mm -hmm. EPUB or PDF. Um, I just love it. I love it so much. It just makes me so happy. And I'm so broke. I shouldn't have spent the money, but I had to. I just had to. I said well, I did it. I did it for us. Material. Oh, yeah. I'll be okay. As long as I have power and a working Kindle or computer, I've got it. I don't think we're going to run out of that anytime soon. I Although you are not. in Florida. <laughs> oh, I hope not. But we'd also talked about the Linux and Unix one. I have not purchased this one. Don't really have enough money. But um, yeah, the, the, the bundle Linux and Unix by O'Reilly mm -hmm. Humble Bundle is uh, has 15 days left on it. Yeah. And this is a lot of stuff. It is if, a lot. You're, Look at that. You're into Linux, um, including, mm -hmm. uh, you know, bash shell and uh device drivers power tools uh some stuff for basics uh linux in a nutshell is kind of a basic mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. lots of bash and some lots of uh system programming books a pocket guide o'reilly's pocket guide mm -hmm. i mean i'd say this if if you're looking to dive a little more into Linux, this is worth the money. 
and it's only $15. I have nerdgasms whenever I go to Humble Bundle. I mean, I like start to like shake and shimmer and tremble. And I'm like, <gasps> oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. it's only $15. I got it, I got it, Bobby, 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 give me, give me, give me. Where's my, where's my credit card? I know. And uh, yeah. Take my money. Take my money. And believe me, they know my money. They know. Well, guys, anytime you, anytime you purchase uh, these humble bundles through yep. through the links that through we provide, our link, mm -hmm. you're helping you're helping to keep this show on the road and helping us to watch all these lovely shows and helping us to bring you all these lovely beers and interviews. You're you're basically paying for our space on the internet, and we thank you so very much. Very much, for your it support. helps. It and I use our link. Does help. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Look at all that maker stuff. Now, I, I tend not to do a lot of maker stuff, but people who like makers, like to make stuff, they would love this. Look at that. I know. Humble Bundle is exactly nerdgasm. I just, I just, I, I just start shimmering all up and down my body. <laughs> Wearable electronics, all that stuff. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm going to stop sharing. You should, make, you should make a whole, you should make a whole movie on that. Uh... On what? On Nergasm? On your, on your new, uh, on, on your new software. Yeah. A whole, a whole movie about me Nergasming. There you go. <laughs> my, my humble gasm. I know. Humble. I was humble bundled. I humble bundled myself. I was humble bundled. Oh, like, that sounds actually like a really cool short, like com comedy short story. Humble bundle me. I was wrapped up in a humble bundle. <laughs> oh, I'm just so excited thinking about it. It just makes me want to cry. I'm just like, I love it so much. So much. Ah. Oh, oh, look, Twitch just told me that we went live. Oh. I hope we've been live for a while. We've been live. We've been live. It just um, sometimes my email doesn't always push uh, the email through. Okay. We've been live for a while. Yeah. For a while, while. I think it, it's it's probably time to wrap it up. Yeah, probably because I want to. Um, I might get another beer. Oh. And look, my you, lipstick is still going strong after drinking a whole beer. After Look at this Sephora. Beer, that's good lipstick. That is Sephora, Sephora right there. I love Sephora. And I got, they had the 50% off sale. So it was like $4. Lovely humans. Uh, yeah. Look for that stuff. Yeah. I just, we need to be a Sephora ambassador. Sephora ambassador. <laughs> I don't know if we can do that. Between Sephora and Ulta. Ipsy. Oh, yeah, I like Ulta. Ulta too. Although there was a story I read about, it was just one store, but you wonder if it's encouraged other places. It was a, it was a bad, bad story about Ulta. So I'll tell you offline because. Bad story about Ulta. Well, yeah. I can say that I have never been disappointed by any of the treatment or the prices that I've gotten at Ulta in Corvallis. That's good. Every time I've. Every time I've walked in, I've always wound up getting decent advice, mm -hmm. and I've never been pressured to purchase anything I didn't need or want, which is, like, that is the bottom line for me. Mm -hmm. If you're not pushing me to purchase anything I don't want, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to come back. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what the story is offline. I mean, it could have just been one store, just a few stores. It could have been, like, a management level thing. Yeah, Maybe not. Yeah. I'm trying to find the article. Hmm? Well, guys, we're so happy that you could join us today. Uh -huh. If you would like to find us on Twitter, it's at Beery G E. Uh -huh. And if you follow us, we'll follow yeah. you back. Because we love you. We Lola, love you. Where can we find you on the internet? Um, Twitter at Lola Laracy. Um, that's really my big place right now. I haven't gone back to update other things like I'm supposed to. One day I will. And you can find me at L Tepler. 
I am Linda Tepler. You can uh, find me on, you can also find me on Amazon under, Lin, under Linda Tepler. Uh, my mm -hmm. book, Hunchback, is still for sale. It's a lovely little steampunk novel. And I'd really love it if you gave it a look over. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. And don't forget that we're doing gaming now on Twitch. So mm -hmm. if you have a game you'd like to see very good entertainment, get out and try let us know and one of us will jump on twitch if we can if we can afford to go buy it we will buy it and we will jump mm -hmm. on it and try it <laughs> mm -hmm. well guys i hope you have had a great time with us here tonight we will be back again in two weeks probably with some controversy or an interview we're not or a sure. magic show we'll see yeah. we'll see or a magic mm -hmm. show <laughs> mm -hmm. we'll talk to you later oh. we hope oh sorry were you going to say something Oh, no, oh, no. I was just laughing at that. Oh. Well, guys, we've had a great time. And we hope that we hope that you guys have a really great night. And we hope that you have a really great beer. Good night. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good night.